Hey. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hello. Welcome to Tea Talks. My name's Herb III, and y'all know Matt. Today we're going to be drinking tea with tiny little guy wands and single cups. Cool thing about drinking tea with friends and having multiple small vessels to brew in, then we can all stick our noses in and it's a little bit more, you know, it's our own business. Get to brew on our own, uh, how we want to. Yeah. Brew as strong or as little as we want. And it's a pretty simple minimalistic st style of tea vessel too, right? It's just a bowl thingy with a lid. So what kind of tea is this? That's a good question. So today, um, we're going to be drinking a raw puer. As we know, I love raw puer. Holy, but this raw puer is um, from... Old. Old. <laughs> Old. It's from 1970s. I bought nice. it from the Chinese tea shop and I dropped a little on the ground. But I bought it from the Chinese tea shop. This is a loose... Shung Puer, as you noticed, it wasn't in a cake. They call that Mao Cha, mm -hmm. right? So that's loose. And then it was aged. Um, I, I looked into it. I don't know how it was aged. Could have been either dry stored or wet stored. Um, maybe it was dry stored because it still has a lot of um, stronger notes to it, right? Like, um, this smells super amazing. Mm -hmm. And it ages a little faster when it's loose, but I guess you can lose some of the uh, the good flavors if it's aged loose compared to an aged chung cake, mm -hmm. right? So this is Pu'er 101, and this is um really nice. It's from the 70s, you said, right? Yeah, it says 1970s. It also says nice. it's wild. It also says it's gushu. Oh. So these are a lot of big labels to say about a tea. Wild, gushu, 1970s. So Gushu meaning ancient, over 100 years old. Is over 150 or 150. Or, yeah, something oh, okay. like that. 200 maybe. Nice. Um, so it's saying it's a wild, old forest style raw puer that was kept loose and yada, yada, yada. Supposedly, it's kind of hard to totally tell if loose puers are true because they don't have the branding. Oh, yeah. Right? They don't have the wrappers and the nafe that's actually pressed in. That's another stopping it to be counterfeited to right it, right yeah. of authenticity mm -hmm. but i got this from daniel and he's nice. a reputable tea uh dealer and i believe what daniel got is the true true mm -hmm. not to mention this tastes really good so nice well i've never had it so. no i've been saving it for matt oh yeah and he's been uh well you you let me know what's been going on with you and the tea world. The tea world. Well, I've been getting into it. How long should we brew this, by the way? Um, probably about ten to fifteen seconds. Yeah, we're probably good. So, no, it's perfect. I'm getting uh, getting it's, specific. So yeah, that kind of goes into your question. I've been I've been getting into tea. I think <clears throat> I've I've graduated from like tea novice, who just like doesn't know nothing about tea. I. I'm thinking about tea every day now. I'm thinking about going home, drinking it, which do I want. Right now I'm uh, I'm cycling through raw and ripe puer, uh, what I have, what I bought from Daniel, what I've, mm -hmm. you know, you've suggested. And uh, I think you're a tea guy. No, I'm I, becoming, I, I'm, I'm nowhere close to a lot of these guys. No. And I've been watching it on YouTube, you know, mm -hmm. like TDB, um, mm -hmm. Mayleaf, mm -hmm. uh, Dawn, you mm -hmm. know, been watching a lot of these. I like watching, um, my favorite is before I go to bed or, mm -hmm. you know, the, the old cell phone in bed, which is, you know. Loving that. Not great. Uh, but I'm, I'm watching uh, guys kind of go through Yunnan province looking for tea plants. I'm watching them pick the tea plants. Um, you know, I'm watching, watching the whole mm. thing. So, well, should we do our tasting? Um, profile yeah, on let's, this now? We'll do that through throughout here. Okay, so what do you... What anything are you, you can pull out of it. Anything we can pull, okay, so... Old. Books. Some wood. Yeah. The, Creamy. I think ash. I think ashy. Some ash, mushroom. Um, A mushroom thing going on. Coca-Cola. Wood, 
definitely w old wood. So what I was going to say, um, he's been watching tea videos. And for all y'all out there that do the YouTubing, you probably have never stumbled across a tea video. Mm -hmm. But there is people that um, have been at it a long time that make videos. Um, and some are really ex they explain really well. So you got mm -hmm. Don from Mayleaf, and Don from Mayleaf is kind of like a bougie Chinese tea sorcerer, and he, he produces cakes, and he goes into some serious um, details with tea brewing and tea preparing, and he, he's really fun to watch. Then you got like um, Global Tea Hut, I forget the guy's name, but this character, he's more of a guy who follows the way of tea, or the Cha Dao, so it's more of a, a spiritual place where he's growing with the tea, and he produ he sells tea too, but it, he's you could tell his vibe is different, mm -hmm. right? And then um, there's p people like Farmer Leaf and Crimson Lotus that will go right into the tea mountains, and they're really fun to watch. Nice. Again, super ex exploration who knows something they're super cool mm -hmm. and then um i watch a lot of scott from united sourcing and he's he's more of a a person's person a little so he it's 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 great you get tons and tons and tons of tea knowledge it's like mm -hmm. super grateful for it I'll, so much I, I wouldn't know anything about tea if it wasn't for the internet so yeah so, the yeah. youtube i i mean what i've really kind of realized diving into this world podcasts just it's just so much there's just so much to look at there's so much to explore and you know mm. we're just a couple of like western dudes mm -hmm. just like dipping our toe i mean me anyway dipping my toe in this five thousand years of tea drinking culture you know completely different over there um we we kind of have no idea no, right exactly i mean it's kind of like just a whole different culture, right? It's like, yeah. so, so yeah, but and great, you would say stuff. you would say Westerners have been missing out on true tea. I, I mean, I have. <laughs> I I didn't know a tea like you know. All I knew was like Tetley, and I I just knew I didn't like it. I thought it mm -hmm. was for old people, uh, like my grandmother mm -hmm. who's English, you know, with her tea bags, and my mom as well. You know, all the herbal stuff they sell at the grocery mm -hmm. store with all that kind of, like, spiritual stuff attached to it, you know. It's all marketing, right? And uh, what's cool about this is, like, there's kind of no marketing in it. It's a, it's really, like, we just don't have have the, like, the, uh, it hasn't been capitalized. Like, everything gets in our, our society, right? It's, it's such an ancient, like, niche and there's so many categories of tea there's so many varietals of the plant and there's so many cities and villages that have learned to grow and prepare tea for consumption and they're all completely different and unique and to have a good tea you can almost feel the love of that area on the plant and a different mm -hmm. form of it so this is like we said it's an old shung but that comes from yunnan yunnan could very well be the birthplace of tea so yunnan bushes taste distinctly different than other types of tea so it's mm. it's really an isolated product that is um yeah insane. yeah and you know you watch some of these videos and they're, they're like you know i saw one don was going and from mayleaf was going to uh looking for buyers for his like one year of, of raw um puer and mm. he had to be interviewed by the actual guy who was selling it to him like the guy sat him down they drank tea and he like he was oh, like wow. i'm not gonna just sell it to just some like you know yeah. guy who wants to get rich off this right so he made him go through this this whole thing you know and it's so there's kind of like you know you gotta be jumped into it a bit right and there's there's a lot well i think there's a lot of uh really good tea there but yeah when you're going to specific mountains of small micro batch stuff that is just amazing yeah then sure right but uh like if I landed That's in true, yeah. if I landed in Kuming or Mangha or Pu'er City tomorrow, I'll be able to find tea because I know that there's a massive tea mall in Kuming and I know there's tons of tea in Manghai. Will I end up drinking a lot of bad tea before I find the good good for sure? Because there's just going to be so much there. Yeah. If I spent long enough there, I'd find tea at least I like that I mm -hmm. know is probably really good. But again, 
the people that go year after year for 15 years are starting to get really skilled at yeah. knowing the people. They have all these connections. It's crazy. It's very cool. It is, yeah. The, just the depth of it, you know, really gets it. Mm. And and just like, you know, you see that and then you, you, like living in our city, Victoria, right? It's like there's one place that I know to buy, you know, ripe puer. And it's that place you sent me to. And it's loose. It's, it's loose and, the and, and they don't tell you anything about it. They're just like ripe puer. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's, it's pretty good, but it's nothing like what I can buy online. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so this tea tastes pretty good. It's good. It's old. It's it's ashy. Mm. Um, it's... It reminds it, me of like warm Coca-Cola. Warm Coca-Cola. If, Coca if you took out the sugar. I don't get any sweetness from it myself. Mm. Now, like, I got, like... I, I have a chronic sinus infection, and I'm sure that's hampered my taste buds. Mm -hmm. So I, I probably, you know, taste the really obvious stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I do, you know... Compared to say like a uh, younger ripe puer from like I don't know 2015, mm -hmm. this has got that old ashiness to yeah. it that you know I recognize. I was I've been drinking you know um, an older 90s uh, ripe puer and that's it's kind of got that, but um, hard hard to really tell for me to tell the difference between an aged uh, raw and a uh, just a ripe. Kind of so, right now. So here's the thing. So that that makes, I probably wouldn't have a problem, right? Well, mm -hmm. at least for the most. I and again, I don't have the most experience drinking aged raw puer because it becomes extremely expensive. But yeah. I've drank in a few, and I could tell there's 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 differences. Mm. Um, yeah, that's why. Like, so if you're thinking about tea every day, I, I think you're a tea guy. Yeah. You know, and the day will come. When no one's going to be able to fool Matt with certain types of tea. And that's when he'll be, uh, I don't know what the next stage after that we can call is. They might have real... Tea Padawan? Tea Padawan. Right. I think I'm probably a tea Padawan. You're probably, yeah. I'm learning like, the force. You're like, you're like, uh, yeah, you're like uh, Darth Hayden Christensen. What was his name? Annie. You're like I'm Annie. Annie. You're like Annie in probably like the second prequel movie. Oh, yeah. Right? Where he's kind of like chafing under Obi-Wan yeah, a bit, yeah, you know? Yeah, and he's just I'm, I'm definitely little Annie who's like, little Annie. I need to put on my helmet and do that thing. You know, mm. I'm definitely a little Annie mm. right now, but you're probably, you know. And you know who's learning a lot more about T2 is my girlfriend. Bailey. Shout Bailey, out shout out to Bailey. Um, yeah, she's uh, she's into tea pretty hard. And mm -hmm. here's another thing. Oh, fill my green green leafed heart. Um, he's starting to like Shung Pu'er. How did this happen? No, raw, young Shung. How did this happen? You? The boy? No, you. Oh, me? Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. I. Uh, it just kind of grows on you, right? It's like mm. uh, I don't know. You know, when I used to drink alcohol, like I. You know, there's there's some you can barely like choke back beer when you first start drinking, but then like there you go. my favorite towards the end was Alexander Keith's, which mm. is like kind of this distinct. It's on the East Coast mainly, mm -hmm. but like you know, which which I really like, you know. And so I think you're you're just your taste buds. You just get into it and you just kind of crave that kind of bite mm -hmm. or that. And, and I don't know, I think the raw puer kind of does have that bite, that astringent, that kind of like, you know. And it has an energy too. And energy. You know, I think in the puer game, right puer tastes really good. It's easy to like, it's creamy. It's like a creamy coffee. When raw puer would be considered like a black coffee and it takes a while to get into it. But also I find the energy of raw puer is like, I don't know, those leaves trap sunshine and it's just mm. a good sunshine vibe. Nice. And then when you have raw pu or ripe puer, um, I actually have investigated this and supposedly ripe puer, it might be double, what I read at least, double the amount of caffeine as raw puer because mm. ripe puer is then fermented, so it's composted, so it's broken down. Oh. When you broke down, break down things, you'd think that the extraction would be more. Yeah, it would so lose things. It could lose yeah. things, but a, a, fa a faster extraction. So I think right where has more caffeine. I'm not sure. Uh -huh. Again, there's people that think the complete opposite. Um, they, I've heard darker teas have less caffeine. Simple. They don't and really know. Teas, like, 
Yeah, sorry. Like they, they don't like know. I've, I've researched. It. I've googled. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, for hours, and like nobody really knows. I think you know? the main thing is, is it's individual for probably the tea plant and the, the batch of tea you have, mm. and then also, you know, I've heard like, kind of jokingly, like they don't even talk about caffeine with tea in China. They just talk about chi. Yeah. Energy. That's it. And and that doesn't mean energy. It also means like subtle sedation it also means high focus it means like so it's it also yeah. just means body feelings and sweaty that's cheap yeah. right so they 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 see it like that or at least some and you know um i don't know well Super maybe that's what that's what happens when you get, become kind of like a tea guy you know it's just the energy you just you you get chi cravings Chi you know? cravings. Maybe that's and what's like, happening. Where do you? Yeah. It's, so it's like, oh, I need some chi. Need to fill up on some chi now. You know. Mm -hmm. So, who knows? Thinking about tea daily, watching tea videos is definitely the path. I yeah. I mean, I'm like, I'm for not, us cats out here in Victoria or Vancouver Island, we're island boys. Are island, we island boys? Island boy. <laughs> oh, you saw that? <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Wow. Didn't turn out too well for that guy. No. No. What happened? Well, they just get blasted. He uh, got like beat up by his girlfriend, and then got, he got a domestic or something. What the island boys? One of the island boys. Oh, I don't know. Right away, good, good yeah. press, good well, press. I mean, you know, they're sp they're probably pretty spiritually good. sound. They're sun gazing. We all know I like that. Yeah, they do mention that. I don't know. They do. I don't know. Yeah. They do. Anyway, I wish him well. Yeah. Whoever they they, are. they they ripped off my future hairstyle is what they did. Is that but, what you wanted to do? No, but I do things. That's a pretty cool. Wow. Well, yeah. What is that like? The pineapple. It's the Express? Kodak Black. Is it? Yeah, that that rapper. I think they had hair like that. I think he's he hmm. got it down on that. So the water might be cooling down a bit, so we'll leave it for a smidge longer. Yeah. Now that. Well, one thing I've already noticed is you drink tea slower than I do. I tend to like. So I've, I've seen I've seen I've seen videos on that too. And no, normally when it's yeah. me, I, I do chug it back too. Do you? Oh, but I yeah. do. But we're find, talking. Exactly. We're, yeah. I do find I taste more and I feel more if I go slower. Yeah. You'll 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 appreciate it way more if even if you spend a couple minutes smelling the cup, it takes a little bit longer and then you got mm. that. But I, yeah. But it just. Go. I do a lot of things fast though. I mean, I eat fast. I. Oh, yeah. I try to do my work fast. Him and me are scary eaters. I just, oh god. Maybe, maybe even another. Even more. Okay. Maybe even a smidge. Let's wait. It's a really nice tea. Um, it's not cheap. Um, no. it's. What's the price point on it? I don't know, 150 bucks uh, for 100 grams online. Is that what you that bag was? I think so I bought it from him in person, so it might have been a little bit more affordable. Oh, Daniel. I, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So but um, it's uh. It's not cheap, but in the world of 1970s raw puer, it's super affordable. Mm. Which is scary too, because I always get afraid, you know, that like all these teas are going to just get sold out. But then again, learn to let everything go. There's always going to be a new tea I like. This is what I have. Well, found. it's cool. Well, we should probably take a break now, but mm. one thing I wanted to talk about was the most expensive teas and what mm. makes those expensive. Let's do that. So, okay. And we're back. we're back. So what were we talking about? Uh, we were going to talk about the most expensive teas. Expensive teas. That one could do. And what, what oh, makes it expensive? The cool, well, I'll start off. Yeah. The cool thing I learned hmm. was the most, some of the most expensive teas are picked in certain ways mm -hmm. so some they'll only take the side buds mm -hmm. and so, they won't take any of the new on the top uh new growth mm. and then yeah some will only be only be buds right so it's only fresh stuff yeah yeah, yeah. um is that is that like standard with tea you, no like you, it's standard, you get the it's, buds or do you get some of the older uh, it's the new growth that's standard with tea um, oh, okay. But every style of tea has a different thing. So if it's just buds, well, one, you're probably not going to be able to make as much. Yeah. Right? So that will probably, in general, increase the, the price of the tea because it's only the bud, depending, right? Um, with puer, they normally pick one bud, two leaves. That's a standard, right? If the, the fresh green sprouts of a bush come out, there might be 
five leaves, so they'll just pick the three or they'll pick whatever, four. Um, oolongs are lower down and they're the bigger leaves, so they're like leaf five and six roughly. Oh, they're more mature. More mature, so oh, it's a whole okay. different style. Uh, white tea is graded in different pickings as well, and uh, the top would be silver needles. Mm. And they just pick that and sun dry it, so it's some of the least processed. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of things that go into it. There's varietals, there's altitude, there's age of the tea trees, there is um, the picking style, there is the reputation of the grower, mm. even. Um, reputation of the company, even. Because there's companies that sell middle grade tea for high prices because everyone knows that it's Coca-Cola. Yeah. I'm speaking about like Dai Manghai Tea Factory, right? Um, then there's age, if it's an ageable tea. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, there's so many variables to why tea can be more expensive, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, well, I, and another interesting thing too is like not really knowing any of the ages of the trees they're all estimates yeah, right so it's, it's like you know I, I guess you can look at a tree and be like oh that is gushu mm -hmm. but you don't really know you know i mean no unless they got history of planting it right in some places do yeah some places do some places um there's more of a guarantee that these trees are really old yeah other places you stumble into which is kind of cool, you stumble into a forest that just has random trees growing, yeah. and they look really old. Professionals can make an estimate. You yeah. can also taste it, and some people can taste the difference. What I do know about this Gushu business that everyone talks about, it's like a big thing in Pu'er and other types of tea, is the age of the tea tree. Well, mm -hmm. the big thing is you're not, you can't really have more of this tea produced because there's only a certain amount of really old tea trees. Mm -hmm. So as the, the more me and Matt show up in the world and the more tea drinking in the West happens, the harder it will be to get 100 year old, 200, 300 year old tea mm. tree yeah. products. And eventually it's gonna be like non-viable. Well, apparently you know? it's, it's, it's already uh becoming like that because mm -hmm. because china is getting richer or it is rich you know mm -hmm. and uh that just wasn't the case 15 20 years ago well they didn't talk about gushu 15 20 years ago either like gushu they is, no it's it's kind of like a newer thing because with puer um normally it's like a blended product or at least when it first started they would blend different bushes mm -hmm. so you'd have this blend it would be strong and it would get easier to drink down the line and that's how yeah. puer was now you got this single varietal tea plants where they're like okay just that garden so you pick it has that taste and you go yeah. to that garden has that taste then they'll press that then they realize that there's trees that are really old and that's kind of how it's kind of blown up. These old ones have really medicinal, strong tastes. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's only been probably maybe 25 years where you could get single, single varietal cakes. But it's interesting, like how I think within the last 50 years, tea has kind of diverged and like uh, right puer didn't exist no. until the 70s yeah. so um you know this this thing i mean another video we saw was uh don and his new uh oh, his new crazy. tea what's that's it called crazy. like playground something i don't know i gotta i'll we'll put it down there yeah, but that it's tea's insane it's so it's basically right puer right mm -hmm. aged in barrels in barrels um but instead of uh, usually, generally you would put water on ripe puer to start that fermentation. Yeah. They're actually using black tea kombucha. Yeah. Which is really cool too. So, so, so the, just even the fact of making less than a metric ton of ripe puer is a really hard thing, and not much of China know how to do it, um, because you need the enzymes in that mold to grow and break down the stuff, right? And they're so, only grow in a metric ton. No, well, I think in like maybe their the, the cement floors eventually hold some of the 
oh. bacteria or whatever. So making it in a smaller batch is tricky and not everyone knows how to do it. Right. Then making it in barrels is a little um, nifty too because normally yeah. they just cover it in rugs mm. or whatever they got in cloth or whatever. And then, and with the theory that the tea is going to absorb the taste of the wood, which is very possible. Then they're also making it, instead of water, they're using kombucha. So they're applying a whole different yeah. thing there. So I, who, no one knows how this is going to age or anything. It's probably going to be very interesting. It's cool, yeah. And then they're also pulling back on the fermentation at more of a around the month mark rather than the two months mark to keep a lot of the young taste of the tea still there. So it's going to brew maybe less dark than some other teas and it mm. might have more bitters and more of its original character so wow. that particular tea they're messing with is very neat but what yeah. what you're trying to say is they're thinking of new shit every day yeah yeah exactly it's mm -hmm. uh and i mean you know if you, if you think if that takes off i mean the possibilities of manipulating the tea pro uh, aging process i mean it's like you know use june on on green tea right there you go june is uh is like a kombucha yeah. type thing like you know uh why yeah. not why not like use use like tea already brewed tea in the tea process like i mean you can kind of yeah. do whatever yeah, you want right idea. and you know and you, that's so. actually a really good idea and i think that type of stuff will blow up as long as it's cost effective and makes good products yeah the people that want unique things will happen like i would love some of that um it's called playground yeah i'd love some yeah. of that because it, it's super nifty and if he never makes another batch which he won't he's mm -hmm. going to make more but if he never did it could be some of the most original puer tea out there yeah if and even in five tasting in five years i mean what, what, happens. what is it gonna do you know and uh, you know there's a very slim chance that it's just gonna disintegrate you know or mm -hmm. morph into some fungus monster it's and true. take off right <laughs> Yeah, but create it is a, very new cool. life, a new life. It is very life. cool. They they think of new tea all the time. So what, like generally, like I was curious about this. So a, an aged ripe puer, mm. what generally does that kind of taste does that turn into? So I don't have the most experience. The ones I've had are way smoother. Okay. The the bitters are almost gone. Then right. they're replaced with a musk, mm. and sometimes this has a musk. This has a musk. Yeah. Right where has a similar musk. Yeah. So you'll have a musk. You might still keep a character. I heard lots of ripe tea goes a little bit clearer as it ages. Um, but the ones I've had um, have looked like normal in the cup. But they definitely yeah. taste. They taste smoother. The energy is better than I've noticed. Like like you like feel great after it. Okay. Really easy on the stomach. Yeah, I'm liking the the young ripe. Mm -hmm. Kind of like I think I have a 2015 they're, now. They're punchy. Yeah, it's a six-year-old, and uh, I'll put a what it is exactly. I can't remember what it is. I think I got it at uh, Daniel. Oh, um, it's that aged one. It's aged taste one. Aged it's aroma. the 2015 one. I can't remember what it's called. We'll find out. I I'm liking it right now. Mm -hmm. Like I'm preferring it over the uh, the more aged mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So how old's your age right? And where'd you get that it, one? It's a 90s one. It's the, it's the Three Cranes. I think it's... Oh, no, no. <laughs> so the Three Cranes isn't right for where. Oh. The Three Cranes is a company that produces Leo Bao. The Leo Bao oh. comes from Guangxi, which is right next to Yunnan. And it's a different type of tea. But they... Daniel even says Leo Bao could possibly be the mother of right puer or the oh. idea behind the starting of right puer because it is semi-fermented before it's pressed too oh okay so it's actually a raw no it's it's um it's, it's a like hecha. a black it's oh a it's hecha. a black oh so so a hecha is a dark haze dark tea right and dark so right puer is a hecha anything that's like fermented slightly goes into the hecha category i guess Oh. But, um, yeah, it definitely, it, it, that tea is funny. It's from 2005, mm. and it's very dark, and it tastes a lot like ripe tea. A little bit not, but a lot like it. So I've you could fool anyone with I've that. I've been brewing is, it in my uh, my ripe to air pot. That's fine. So I, I would stop. I, well, you could. Yeah. It's it's so similar that you probably could. And it, it's a good tea, it, though. It tastes like this. It does. The taste three like cranes, uh, 
it kind of has that aged ashiness. You know? So that, that's another funny thing too. So Leo Bao um, can be found in baskets normally, occasionally in cakes, mm -hmm. but normally it's in baskets. You buy it loose and it's a fermented, dark tasting tea. It's really great. And I'm slowly learning it, but I got one that um, loose that tastes like ripe ware beautifully. And mm. it's like such a really nice taste. Then I have another one that tastes like an old shung and it's even more musky than this. And it's, they taste oh. completely different. And they were, so it's, I don't know. Is it the fair. storage? Or? No, it was the processing. It oh, was processed okay. a little bit more like raw ware. I don't know the differences yet with how they're producing these teas mm. and how much different they are from Pu'er cakes in Yunnan, but another thing I might have said before, and I'm going to keep saying until I'm pissed off that I've been saying it, is Hechas or dark teas from outside of Yunnan are affordable, luxurious, fantastic teas. So you can buy a kilo of that, which you could only buy 300 grams of raw pu'er on average for the same price. So it's three times cheaper, super unique. Mm. I think less is being produced. Um, I think it's the next, next big thing in tea. Right. Mm. And uh, once the tea people get into it kind of thing, and I think it will raise up in value over the next 20 years, probably dramatically, I think. You heard it here first. That's my feeling. So <laughs> stock up on your hate chest. Cool. Well, and if you don't, I won't hate you. <laughs> Uh, so, health. health. We talk about health a lot. Um, what do you, so what do you know about just health benefits of, let's say, ripe pu'er? Um, I know why people drink it. Ripe pu'er, uh, supposedly, in the places it's drunk in China, more older people drink it. I think there's two reasons. It's a really easy drink on the digestive, and it's really good for your morning business, if that's what you need it for. Also, it tastes a similar to old, old Shung Pu'er, and now what they probably used to drink when they were 40 is just not affordable. So it's kind of switched to right Pu'er for oh, the, the older gotcha. folks. So digestion. Digestion. Easy to drink. Uh, I heard it has an antioxidant. I think it's probably packed full of antioxidants. Yeah. It's raw, so dark. Raw uh, pu'er apparently has the most mm. Mm. antioxidants, is what I've heard. Mm. Um, again, it, again, you can read one article on one thing, listen to another yeah. person on YouTube about another thing, and you'll get a best guesstimate, but it goes back and forth. We just don't know. We just don't know. We just don't know. I do know, I do know that each tea category so tea that's produced in a certain way has its own health characteristics just from the manipulation of the plant okay. so that's very cool the same herb manipulated one way will produce a different thing for the mm, body that's crazy super yeah it's it's non-stop there's a universe just in tea and i think tea is like kind of like the super ultra say on manipulatable herb right, right? yeah but what about, what's a chamomile, let's say, what ha or mint. What happens if someone manipulates mint mm. in multiple different ways for a long period of time? I've done it, and I've made some pretty cool things. You've tried that. You've, you've done the, uh, the pu'er process. I've made mint pu'er, and it is yeah. quite nice. But um, I think it kind of opens my mind, at least, to the possibilities of mi manipulation the manipulation of plants mm. for different results, and if these are enjoyable or marketable or yeah. feel goodable you never know like whatever it's funny you get those those plants that humans become obsessed with you know the coffee plant mm -hmm. the marijuana plant mm. the camellia sinensis tea plant tea plant um you know there's just ones that work well with us right yeah. and we've you know i think on, on a lot of ways you know these plants maybe are sentient in a way where they you know, and obviously they can't Sentient have Sentient plants. Hear me out. Yeah, they can't oh, no. have a conversation with us, but they're communicating with us in a way, you know. hundred I mean, like, you know, what's... They're... I mean, they're successful because we're mm -hmm. propagating them. We're the tea plants. Like, the marijuana mm -hmm. plant is everywhere. The, mm -hmm. you know, coffee people... You know, people fight wars of opium, you know. Mm -hmm. These plants got a grip on us, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they're... 
they're propagated in certain ways. That, like they're extremely successful. As, yeah. So know. I think I think in that format with um, the big the big five the big twenty whatever, mm -hmm. um, it's <clears> good to look at what they do to the community and and how they're being used. I yeah. think T is exceptionally cool because yeah. all the big big areas and the big big investments in T all become kind of spiritual at the same time. Hmm. You can't even say that as much with coffee. Coffee, no. coffee has cool vibes, does its cool thing. We're not trying to bag on the coffee. Yeah. Well, but, so, something you said that was really interesting too, even with like tobacco, right? Mm -hmm. And and you were saying how the, uh, the North American natives talk, use tobacco mm -hmm. compared to how we use it now. We use it as like a fix yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of thing too, right? Whereas... Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to. I, I do not want to plagiarize this, but my one buddy right. told me something really awesome, and he went into detail about it. But I'll I'll bullet point it for a second. But it was like tobacco is sacred and used for prayers, mm. right? So they'll burn it for prayers, and it's a sacred thing. And the funny thing is, tobacco use for people that abuse it are kind of in need to sit down and pray, but instead they go over and they're having their smoke. So ironically, right. the plant is still representing itself on the spiritual plane, yeah. except we use it, or I don't, and he doesn't, but people smoke to like relieve stress and they abuse it and they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're treating it horrible and it's, it's in turn making people sick. But yeah. I, I've never heard of someone using it as a medicinal spiritual plant and getting sick from it. I'm sure it's possible, but I, I, I don't think so. You yeah. Know? So, yes. And it's burning it's, it spiritually might be the true. I believe it is the true use of that plant. I'll, I'll, I'll even say it here. So marijuana. I think the true use of it is the CBD pain relief or the creams. Like I think. It works well like that, and it doesn't wreak havoc. I think, um, mm. now, people might hate me for it. I don't want to get into it. It's, it's not like, I don't care what anyone does. But my experience with smoking weed made me isolated. It made me really skinny. It got me really paranoid, mm -hmm. super obsessed, until the point where I was getting anxiety attacks, cold sweats. Super, like, I was. Al it almost made me insane. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it wasn't the, the thing for me. Right. Um, Me too, and and I think you know, um, Herbal Jedi puts it, I mean, beautifully with it. He, Herbal he, Jedi. Yeah, you, you know him. I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's you know he says it's like it's, it is if you can use it in a responsible you know once in a while kind of way, I mean, friggin' go for it, right? But it's it's just kind of the nature of the plant it's what he calls a mama ganja right and it, it kind of sucks you in it gives you that kind of like uh right but he says it also puts kind of like a spiritual film over you right where where you can't, certain things can't get in after a while mm. and that was my experience wholeheartedly Me too. too right but you, again whoever like someone else could probably pull it off so mm. we ain't gonna tell you what to do we ain't gonna do it but we will be right back we're back. Hi. A few more cups of tea. A few more topics to speak. Yeah. Well, what were we ending on? Oh, yeah. The crazy plants that mm. might be in charge of us. Mmm. The symbiotic nature of plant and human. Right. Well, who's really in charge? We feed them. We water them. We make sure they're doing okay. Mm -hmm. What do they do for? Oh, well, they do. They feed things. us. And, they do and things give us for tea. Yeah, <laughs> they're, 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 they're helping. Oh, hey, what are you just, doing to me? What are you what doing, doing for me besides? So I did want to bring up um, what I stumbled across with the, the Facebook and the tea um, groups on Facebook, and somewhere down the line there was this My Tea Pal app. So I downloaded this app. I looked at it for a second. I, I didn't think it worked or whatever. So I was like, whatever. But then I think I, I liked or signed up to one of the group pages on Facebook and I actually got talking to the people and it's actually a community, the My Tea Pal community. So now I got this extra community of tea people that like to drink on Fucha and da da da. And then I, I ended up on a Zoom, a virtual Zoom drinking tea with that one side group on Facebook, mm -hmm. which is really cool. You can see the people that are really into tea and you can have conversations 
And the guy running that, that tea room was the creator of the app. So then I told him I was having struggles with it and he's so cool, this guy named Vincent. And he's like, yo, yeah, I'll help you. So the next few days I started running this app and I'd message him if I was having any troubles. And he was like, I don't know if he was debugging in the background or something, but he, it started to work real smooth for me. And uh, T people are so nice. They're kind of the coolest. They're pretty nice. Um, so this app is neat because you can load it up you can take pictures of your tea and your tea vessels and you can have tea it has brew time it can like start timing your brew sessions That's and cool. it will collect all the information and data and it has a bunch of flavor notes mm -hmm. yada 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 so you can kind of journal digitally about the tea you're drinking my tea pal not only that he was open to suggestions i don't know if they'll change down the road but i was like maybe you should bring in some chinese tea music maybe That'd be cool. and he's, oh, yeah. he's kind of excited so I think it's kind of cool knowing a person that made an app and he might take some app suggestions if not I still know a guy who's making apps that's cool then another thing that happened through this is I guess there's um, an app for laptops computers uh, called gather town or gather and it's um, it reminds me we uh, will show you a picture but it reminds me of like Zelda Link to the Past Super Nintendo style mapping. Mm -hmm. So you got this, you can have these digital mapping places. The group of my t -Pill has this one. It's called. like a Habo Hotel. Yeah. For those so who are familiar with that. If they're familiar yeah. with that. But it, it's uh, called Gather Town and it's a virtual tea room. Looks like a video game. And it's cool because you can walk around and then if someone else is there, you can go to their little avatar and as soon as two avatars are in contact, it then zooms our cameras in and we have digital tea parties and talk about tea on the little video game thing and it's really cool and I've, I've had right. multiple from people um, around the world you know like UK China and uh, Florida and Washington and things so cool. it's been really cool I'm meeting tea people and they're they're becoming my friends you never have to drink tea alone you don't have to yeah it's nice sometimes, but it's also it nice is. people. It is kind of nice to have that reflective sash. Especially in yeah. caveat, the more I get into tea, the more abstract my thoughts around tea become. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I have my friends and girlfriend getting into tea. But it can be a bit lonely when you become so tea savant, when you start getting so deep into it. Yeah, so when you people find don't get it. No, 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 no. no. So when you find these it. videos, you mm -hmm. can get the information. But if you find a community, you can have people like gush back and forth about tea and it, it becomes pretty fun. It's pretty cool. It, less inclusive, more, um, I don't know. Less exclusive? Exclusive? I don't know. Very, we can make up inclusive. words here. Oh, okay. You've heard it today. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, no, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to check it out. I have the My Tea Pal app. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't really explored it too much, but you showed me. That was kind of cool. You you make your little, like, kind of tea sesh and there's notes, and you can put a picture of what it looks like. That's cool. And the time yeah. and the flavor. Yeah, and I guess I'm thinking I haven't fully figured that part out yet, but you can make friends on that, and you can compare notes, and then you could, like, read what people write about teas and stuff. So it's mm -hmm. like... It's really helping to uh, share the um, experience of tea with people. Nice. Very cool. That's Very cool. cool. And you know what else is kind of interesting too, mm. Herb? I was looking, uh, I think we're coming up on our one year anniversary. No of way. Of Tea Talks. Yeah. No way. Yeah, I think this is this episode 14. Yeah, with it's I, we started when I wasn't working in the winter. Oh yeah, and we're getting close. Do we know what? We'll I have to look so. at the date. We'll have to look it's at the date. It's one year of tea talks. We'll have to put it in like a compilation. Yeah, of um, all the good good stuff. Of the craziness. So, what, do you this. know exactly when we started? I can check. I, I don't know exactly. I think it was sometime in December. Okay. I think it was well, right around Christmas. I remember um, we had a Christmas episode. Did we? Yeah, so it was it before could have been, Christmas. Maybe we passed it, I don't know. Well, we're going to look into this, we don't, I don't know. know. We're not very on the ball. <laughs> we're, we're tea guys. We, yeah, we follow the, the way of tea, right? Which and is, just, you know, you don't need this happens then, that happens then, you know. 
brew for exactly 14 seconds or you it's could. trash. You could, or you could just learn through it. Just learn. It's hard to do, you know, like, like I weigh my tea. Some people don't weigh their tea. I think, that, I, don't. I think that's the next stage for me is to not weigh and brew well, but Wayne tea's nice too because you get your parameters. That's interesting because I just I go by my pot, like how full generally my pot is. You know, it's probably a good way. I say uh, stay that way. Yeah. It's probably it's probably a really cool way to adopt and eventually learn, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, fill your pot the way you can see it. That's that's a good idea. And then it changes, you know, when you add the hot water, the the tea leaves open up. Totally. They expand. So yeah, I mean. Fill your pot, fill your boots. Do, how's this, do loops. How's this um, tea making you feel? Well, we were uh, commenting and during the break that. How's it making you feel there? He hasn't got little it. Little sweater yet. monster. Can he reach his little cup? Maybe I can give him a little Oh, should we give him a cup? Oh, yeah. We'll give him from something from 1970. Because he looks Is it like, these ones? Yeah. He yeah. looks like he's from 1970. He looks like he's from another dimension. Yeah. How cold is this um, one? It's still a little warm. You want this one? You want this one? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Do you like the 70s or what? Oh. He's like, give me some more of that shampooer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no more slosh bucket for him. I should have given him a rapper name like Little Shung. Little Shung? That would be great. But he's Chamberlain, Lord Chamberlain. Lord Chamber boy. He thinks he belongs in high up places like this. He's a dog parrot. Oh yeah. Very he's cool. cool. He's, he's legend. A, he's the best. Legend in his own. He's getting bigger too. He's almost a year. Almost here, December twenty second. He was born. Wow, December twenty second. Mm -hmm. You're almost as old as Teets us. No, go, no, go. Uh, you gotta no. be safe. You can't. You can't be uh, messing around this high up chain boat. Mm -hmm. So he's fallen a couple times, but never got hurt or anything. He he's pretty careful. Mm -hmm. He's good. He's perch mm -hmm. perchable. Oh, water. Oh please. Oh please. No problem. Fine. So. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Oh. That might be a good, uh, good idea for an episode. We'll, mm. we'll go full on English tea. I gotta study up on it. I gotta do a few more high teas and then come here high and teas. do my That's own. That's right, you did one for your birthday, didn't you? I don't know if it was my birthday. We just did something. It was it Bailey's birthday? Shoot. High tea. Well, we got it here in Victoria, we got this place called the Empress. And it's like famous on the island, it's super British. Mm -hmm. so it's really nice. It's a, it's a nice hotel, mm -hmm. and they have high tea. And it's highly expensive. Highly, very expensive. So me and my girlfriend um, actually went to a high tea, but at a lesser expensive yeah. place because we stayed over at the hotel, and it was really nice. Um, Victoria tea, is tea, very is very British. Yeah, the tea yeah. itself wasn't as good, sadly, as the tea I brewed. Mm. I, I had a black tea. It's supposed to be like their their big big, and it was like meh. Well, they're more about the experience. It's tea and you know? snacks. Yeah, and they're like, add. Do, did you do they add milk? Do they encourage that? Yeah, yeah. Sugar oh, yeah. and yeah, milk. It's, it's so. Western style, and they have Doesn't all these really snacks. Matter. So tea blew up really big in England, like three, four hundred years ago, from an empress who uh, was getting into tea, and she was starving because I guess her husband was ditching her all day. So she kind of, like the joke is she needed an excuse to have desserts. So oh, she's, like she's, high tea she was or tea stress time. eating? Yeah, so oh. tea time would be her excuse to like eat a bunch of desserts at like three, four o'clock and Yikes. have well, Western style tea. I, we, I know that. <laughs> I think we both know a little bit about stress eating. Yeah, speaking um, of eating and my diet. Oh yeah, what's I, new? I, I'm a sugar-free V now. That's my rap name today, Sugar Free V. Sugar Free V. Um, I'm low sugar vegan, and I actually do feel great. Yeah. Every single night I'm having the I need sugar struggle, and I'm just letting it go. That's it's, tough. It's like a That's depression, hard. and you just got to let it go. Um, but we all know that sugar is actually terrible for people. I love it, too. It's so I just not need great. To, I need to stay away from it, else I'm going to have massive health problems. There's another one of those plants that's got a hold on, you know. 
I think, you know, tea is probably the most benevolent, one of the most benevolent mm -hmm. plants. Mm -hmm. You know, it brings, thing, gives you energy. Yeah, burn your tongue, you get a little, I've been actually drinking uh, show puer a little too late. Mm. Like at seven and I, I go to bed at like one. It's not working It's for not good, no. Um, another thing, people talk about it, there is a caveat about the unhealthiness of tea. Oh. And if you're drinking really hot tea and slurping it, you could burn your throat. And I guess India, the areas in India I, I've read, have a higher throat cancer from the hot liquids. So the scalding the back of your throat with hot liquids oh. could create throat cancer. So that's like really? the only unhealthy thing. Never heard of that. There wow. you go. You heard it here, folks. Wow. Let your tea cool down. Probably tastes it better too when mm -hmm. it's cooler. Like I mean, all you can, all you can taste when it. I mean, I greedily drink my tea, right? So it's like piping as soon as it's in there. I'm like I'm wanting, but yeah. Can't really taste much, you know. No, so when it's really, really hot and you drink it, I get more of the oils. Mm. So I'll get the oils and yeah, some of the sweetness. I if like it, that. If you let it cool yeah. down a bit, you're gonna get a lot more body, a lot more sweetness. If you let it cool down a bit more, sometimes you lose a little bit. So it's a little tricky. Yeah, it's a little tricky. I like looking at you know. I like looking at it in the in the guy one or whatever. Um, and this tea's going on forever. I've brewed. I, I like looking at the oils, kind of swirling around. Yeah, you know? so. it looks magical. It is. Yeah, it's a tea magic. Mm -hmm. Well, this was a magical episode. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's 1970s puer. 1970s puer, taking it back to the 70s. Mm-hmm. Like my pet rock. My pet rock, yeah. Or original Star Wars. Original Star Wars. I've been watching the original Star Wars. Can we just talk a little bit about it? Okay. It's um, it's epic. I've we, me and Bailey have watched from episode one to episode three. Then we watched Han Solo. Then we watched Rogue One, and we've watched A New Hope and a bit of The Empire Strikes Back. And she's getting into it. Yes. There you L go. A little victory. Yes. Nice. Well, and yeah, original original Star Wars. I mean, it's it's kind of interesting, right? I mean, no matter what you think about the prequels, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, you see George Lucas's vision in it, um, but he doesn't. Those first two movies, he doesn't really have a big hand in the direction of it. He was kind of he was still a young director in it, right? Mm. So what you really see is is almost, uh, you know, Return of the Jedi, when he had more control, because he was a big deal director then. Mm. Um, you saw it kind of going towards the prequels with the Ewoks, which a lot of uh -huh. people don't like. Mm. Um, you know, that movie is awesome. Like, Jabba's like Palace that. is friggin' amazing, yeah. you know? But then after a while, you know, like, what does Han Solo do after Jabba's Palace? He just gets freed, and then he's like... He like blows up a thing and he gets... I think he blows up the Death Star or him and... Uh, he blows up the shield generator. Oh, oh yeah, Death that's Star. what he does. And but, but it's really about Luke and Vader after that, right? Yeah. And then Leia and the Ewoks, they're kind of just filler, you know, mm. after that. So, so yeah, it's kind of interesting in that way. I mean, the first two, I mean, amazing, obviously, groundbreaking, uh, highly influential. <laughs> What? I like them all. Yeah. Like individually, I think they're all great. <laughs> I love your two cents. You know, he's, he's very to, critical. You're trying to roast, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to roast Return of the Jedi, but you don't. Need I'm not to. roasting it. It's a, it's a great movie. It does roast itself, but it's yeah. not as good as Empire. No, but no. it's different. Like the ending might be as good as all of them. Right. The middle Ewok stuff is hard. I'm going to tell you this. Back when I was 14, 15, I did. A lot of magical funguses to the point where I scared myself silly. I was vomiting and I, I was in delirium. I was believing things that weren't real. I actually had to be saved at a friend's house. Um, and so I show up at this friend's house and they kind of just like treat me like an invalid. They're like, okay, bring this person. And I'm like borderline overdosing if you can. So it was, it was a heroic dose. And they're like, okay, bring this guy downstairs. And they turned on Return of the Jedi for me. And I've seen it lots before. But you know what? Um, it was like the first time when Yoda died, I cried. Whoa, you know? Um, yeah. It was like, it was 
super intense. Right. And, you know, maybe Return of the Jedi stained a little deeper. Sure. Because I was in complete, utter... You were open. Yeah, you were complete, utter open. Yeah. Whereas I watch it, I'm pretty much closed <laughs> and jaded. <laughs> You're not selling so, me those teddy bear Ewoks. I'm not, today. you know, and why does Luke even go back to Yoda? He just says, like, four things and then he dies. It's like, why? It's sad. It's like, probably a long journey to go see him and then he just it's like you seen, ah, you're you, not have, ready have you have you been down the ewok original movies yet is have that seen, like this this christmas special no no that? no have you seen the christmas special yet no i heard that's not worth insane it yeah. is painful they <laughs> they got they got they got the wookies like chewbacca's family and then right. they do cameos with the other star wars people but they don't subtitle the talking between the the Wookiee family, oh. so it's just Wook, Wookanese right. going on, and you're watching. And then there's all these like little skits, which are like a seven minute video of dancing, weird. Like it's insane. And then also the Ewok movies are insane. I highly suggest them all. Get in. Why not? I mean, if you're into that, you can stuff. watch the uh, Star Wars. Christmas special on YouTube. It's insane. Oh, it's painful. I want to watch it every Christmas with a new person just to hurt. Them. Maybe we'll do that. I'm into hurting I you. Mean, this we did. We did watch. Season. We did watch uh, Microwave Massacre. Ugh. So. Sting. <laughs> well, yeah, we're into the stuff. That's like, good. Well, are we done? Like, are we? Uh, I think this is a good, good time to end. Mm -hmm. um, we mm -hmm. came. We saw. We conquered. We drank. True. We, uh, it's getting chilly. It's rainy. It's, rainy. Oh, it's the rainy season here. So. You drink the ripe tea or the old chung in the rain?